running back is going to get open against anything. When he turns up field, the linebacker is just immediately lost in coverage. He immediately loses that battle. And we're just going to play games with this safety once again. He wants to collapse on this post route and try to take that away because this guy's getting beat. But he can't because he also knows that there's a wheel route coming in the area that we just went over. And doing so basically gives up a touchdown one way or the other. Based on the fact that these two cornerbacks are starting so close to one another that they'll often run into one another. And you can see he's just setting a straight pick. It's to the point where I could probably throw to either one of these receivers. I could throw this one breaking across the field or I could throw to this one breaking outside. But you can see how it just sets a wide open pick. And this guy's open by like 10 to 15 yards. <laughs> For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full breakdown for you guys today. Today is Friday, and every week for the last couple of weeks at least, maybe over a month or more, I've been putting out full breakdowns for my gameplays on Fridays. The reason that I do these videos is because when I show an offense, uh, in a gameplay, I don't always get to show everything an offense can do, so I like to do a practice mode style video so that when I put out a video about an offense, I can link you guys right back to this so you can see the full breakdown. And I think that this is working out because he's getting a lot of views uh, over the weekend. So if you want well, me to continue this series, if you like this series, please make sure to be subscribed, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, there's two different playbooks that I just put out, the Niners and the Ravens, and I'm really not sure which one I want to stick in. I try to use a playbook for you guys because I want to show um you know plays that you guys want to see so let me know what playbook you guys would rather see content from if you guys want more help you can download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top pin comment today i'm going to show you guys an offense out of the gun wing slot week which is not a, an offense that only the ravens have but a lot of these plays are plays that only the ravens have including the raven double post which is probably my favorite. That's been my favorite going back a while. That, that's going to be really the basis of this entire scheme. And I'm going to start off with the run plays because this is a really run-heavy formation. I'll first show you guys what my four-play audibles would be. So this is a run-heavy formation first, my, my main run play, and an outside run play at that is going to be the buck sweep read option. But I also need an inside run, and the halfback base is going to be the best version for that. So those are my two run plays. My two most used pass plays are going to be the Raven double post because this is a one-play touchdown and pretty much my dink and dunk play as far as this uh, formation goes. But it's going to be a one-play touchdown against every defense in the game in a couple different ways. And then I have the PA bubble Y over, which is going to be another good dink and dunk play. But we're going to start off with the run plays, and the best run play is going to be the buck sweep read option. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the run plays, but there are a lot of RPOs and stuff like that that I really will go over the reach structure when it comes to this play here you're really just watching the read defender or you can even go as far as to making a pre-snap read like if there's no cornerbacks on the outside there where there's two cornerbacks you have a you have kind of double stack cornerbacks there over the tight ends i can make a pre-snap read and take it to the running back outside but since they're there i really have to watch this defensive end and you know a lot of times you can see their defensive end crashes and when you see that look, you want to keep with the quarterback every single time. You're watching this guy right here. This is your read defender. Based off of what he does is based off of what you decide to do with the ball. If he goes aggressively after the running back like he does there, you're going to want to keep it with the quarterback. But there'll be a time where he'll stop and wait for the quarterback, and then you'll have to hold A and hand it off. So I'm sure we'll get some looks like that too here on the next play. Like I said, he's still crashing. And you can see how good a blocking we get. And if you have a mobile quarterback, you're going to get some big runs. If you're going to run this type of offense where the quarterback keeps the ball a lot though, you're either going to want to run out of bounds, safe, uh, you know, go down uh, by double tapping X, or you can just put your ball carrier to conservative, which will make sure that your quarterback doesn't fumble as much as he normally does. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to force this handoff because I liked what I saw over here. There wasn't a lot of defenders over here like there was last time. If I want to make that pre-snap read and use this play like that, I can. You can see there's only one defender over there. I have faith that that more than likely my, my tight end or my pulling blocks, because I got two pulling guards here. I got faith that one of them can get over there. And you can see that the defensive end stood up and hesitated anyway, which is the look that I was talking about. So here I didn't really have a choice anyway, as you can see, he stops and waits. If you see a player stop and wait like that, you got to hand it off because he's just going to wait for the quarterback and more than likely uh, you know, bury you for a loss. So that's your outside run is both options are 
sweeping wide to the outside left and right, left with the quarterback, right with the running back, you're going to need a good inside run. And the best one for that is going to be the halfback base. So with this play here, this is just your best inside run. You're going to want to follow your pulling guard. You can see that there's often a cutback lane if it's too many defenders in that area. I can motion this guy out here too to try to spread this defense a little bit because space is how you create offense at the end of the day. And then, like I said, just wait for that guard to pull around. And a lot of times, I mean, if, if it's not there or you don't like the holes, you can always just take this little cutback lane. But there's lots of options. I mean, I can motion across flowers here to try to, once again, pull that cornerback outside. Although you can see I pull a defender with me into the area. But that's fine. There's lots of different things you can do to try to create, um, you know, space over here for the running back. And this is not nearly as explosive a run. It's a very consistent run. You can see I'm getting a lot of, uh, you know, close to five-yard carries. This is just, you know, you need an inside run to go with these outside runs. you got to be able to attack all areas of the field. And this is going to be your best option for an inside run. Now, next up, I'm going to go over some dink and dunk plays, starting with the halfback slip screen. When it comes to screen plays, I really don't like running them unless I have a good secondary option. And I do have two decent options with the A route, which is a uh, more like a zone beating route, and the B route, which is going to be more like a man beating uh, out route. So you do have two decent options, but they're not always going to get open in time, depending on what type of pressure your opponent's sending, which makes the, uh, the screen pass still the best option on the play. But like I said, I won't run these type of plays unless I have another option. And at least I have that. So this is a good play. The, the, the screen play really should be man or zone, while the A route beats uh, zone and the B route can beat man. But the B route takes a little while to get open, and I don't really trust you know the amount of time that it takes, as you can see right there. That one takes way too long. The flat route is much more realistic. So I would just say the flat route A... Uh, for zone and the the running back for man would be the easiest way to read this defense there are a couple of good one play touchdowns and uh, just good receiving options with a couple of these other plays i'll start with the pa bubble y over this play here is just a really good dink and dunk concept uh as i i mean i have a pretty good idea that i'm looking against a man zero right now but i'm going to check and release this running back and put the b receiver on a drag and all i'm really going to do is watch the cornerback in front of the y receiver because if he follows i know that i can't necessarily throw the bubble though there he didn't follow too closely so i could always sneak it underneath uh, but that's going to be my zone beater while the uh, the dragging tight ends are going to be my man beater so like i said once again i'm just going to watch the uh, the cornerback there he follows i know that um, i got to throw one of the tight ends it's really that simple it depends on what that cornerback does if he drops down in any way towards the corner or towards the receiver i know that that's not really an option and i got to go to one of these tight ends which are really just there for for you know to cross the field and make plays you see right there we got that cover too they're going to be man coverage both of those routes can be man coverage very easily so last but not least i have the raven it's a double post which is like i said this is your probably your best dink and dunk play and one play touchdown i'm going to pick that first and then i'll start off with random for this play here you really have two options the running back is going to get open against anything if you throw it right away before he gets in the line of scrimmage i'm not saying it's always going to be a huge play but if you take 10 yards a pop doing that your opponent's going to, it's going to drive your opponent crazy for one thing as you can see right here that's a zone the uh the receivers get zone chucked that's why that defender wasn't anywhere near the the running back to make a play but man or zone doesn't really matter here looks like a man coverage if i get out quick enough and sprint to the edge he's going to get you know five six yards every single time but you got to recognize when it's man because you got to make that decision quick that was a man coverage i threw it out right away here's another zone coverage i can just do this over and over and get five to ten yards every single time and just make my opponent worry about that you also have some good options with the tight ends if you want to you can motion this guy across and put him on a drag and now i got a double drags concept which is going to be you know that's always difficult to stop against man coverage here you can see there's nothing out here and now i got andrews running the space uh that's one of the few times i'm going to make that motion I and mean, i do make that motion sometimes i also motioned out this receiver at one point so i could always do that again and put him on a slant give myself a slant and a drag or i could leave him in there and just put him on a, a 10 yard in and now i have a high low concept with the the two tight ends which obviously i'm going to force because i'm trying to show it off and and it didn't work out because that was a cover one but that's you know those are probably your best options i mean what he's doing right now is fine because it is still kind of a man beater it's like a spin dig man beater but i don't find that that's really that effective i think that there's better options for that particular player after that we got some one play touchdowns we'll start off with tampa two there's a few things you can do with tampa two you can motion this receiver across and put the b receiver on a streak probably best to put the a receiver on a streak and then the b receiver on a flat but either way this setup here the y receiver will get open above the cornerback for just a big play it's not a necessarily a one play touchdown but still a big play your other option is the motion in the x receiver and then this will give you uh, some options when it comes to 
um, you know, beating the, uh, splitting the seams. So I'm going to put the Y receiver on a slant, and now the X receiver will get open right up the middle here as long as he doesn't get banged around the bodies too much as uh, the safety did look like he was going to jump on that at front at first you can see at the start of this play that the safety does come inside big time but once he realizes there's a wheel defender coming to the area he has to go back outside and respect that and that because honestly you can see he would have been open too but that's what gets this receiver open right between the safeties you see we're splitting right down the middle for a very easy one play touchdown with that in mind though this uh, running back does have an opportunity to get open as well with really no adjustments as you can see he you have to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field but there's multiple options here when it comes to beating a defense like cover two and a lot of the defenses i'm going to show you so you got multiple one play touchdowns versus cover two zone how about cover two man cover two man is very similar the running back is still going to be a good play i don't have to really make any adjustments he's just going to get open outside of the coverage there as you can see typically the linebackers can't keep up if you have a fast uh, running back it's gonna work even better if you run from a hash mark to the short side of the field and this is because they have to turn up the field faster i don't have to worry about pressure as much as you can see here i mean i'm getting sacked but it also has to do with how the animation of the uh, running back turning up field is handled even though i got sacked there let's go to the replay as you can see on this play here the last time i ran this play it didn't react like this he was much tighter in coverage but you can see because now there's so much more uh less space to the sideline when he turns up field the tight end or the the, the linebacker is just immediately lost in coverage he immediately loses that battle because he has to flip his hips much quicker and more dramatically and that just gets this guy wide open down the field and you can see how chris jones you know is the type of guy that can just run right through an offensive line so getting that ball out quicker is much better and he also turns up field for an easier quicker catch and run you can also split the safeties by doing the uh, the same trick, motion this guy in, putting the B receiver on a 10-yard out route, and putting the X route on a slant, and this will set up your uh, your safeties to the point where they have to, uh, you know, once again, that wheel route. I mean, that safety was collapsing, but you can see how the wheel route still has that effect that has to he has to respect that. And we're just going to play games with this safety once again. As you can see right here, he wants to collapse on this post route and try to take that away because this guy's getting beat. But he can't because he also knows that there's a wheel route coming in the area that we just went over that's going to get open too. So he has to respect that. And doing so basically gives up a touchdown one way or the other as we are now splitting the safeties the exact same way. So that's cover two, man. Let's go and let's do cover one, man. Cover one, man, is pretty much going to be the exact same way as this running back is going to get open the same way once he turns up field for another big catch and run play if you're going to throw the running back you probably want to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field so we're going to move the ball over if you're going to do it this way you're probably going to motion this guy in once again because you're going to want to bring all the um you know all the as many as much of the defense over as you can but you can see how this running back once he turns up field has an opportunity for a big catch and run one play touchdown once again as this is one of the glitchier wheel routes in the game but you can also attack the post route uh, which we can do if we run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field once again. Motion this guy in. And then we're going to put the X route on a fade. There's there's a couple different options here, but I find this is the best way to go. As these two defenders being so close to one another, is we're going to naturally set a pick for that Y route, who's just gone once he gets past uh, the safety. As you can see, I mean, that was about as easy as a one-play touchdown as you're going to get against cover one. We go to the replay once again. You can see, based on the fact that these two cornerbacks are starting so close to one another, that they'll often run into one another if you set the route concept up correctly. And you can see he's just setting a straight pick for McDuffie. It's to the point where I could probably throw to either one of these receivers. I could throw this one breaking across the field, or I could throw to this one breaking outside. Now, this route on its own, the Y route, can get open by itself. You don't even have to make any of those crazy adjustments because this is naturally a, a route that will be a big play. But you can see it wasn't a one-play touchdown. So to me, it's best just to do it this way, make that motion. I'm going to make that motion a lot. I recommend making that motion a lot during running plays just so your opponent doesn't pick up on it. But you can see how it just sets a wide open pick. And this guy's open by like 10 to 15 yards. <laughs> There's just nobody in the area because of that pick play. It's going to have the same effect against cover zero. So we're going to pick that. Against cover zero, it's pretty much the exact same setup. I'm motion this guy in, put him on a fade. You see the cornerbacks are in the same position where they're both at a parallel mark to the point where the, the Y receiver is going to get open right away. And I didn't even make any blocking changes, although I typically would against cover zero. We still get an instant open one-play touchdown. Your best blocking changes are definitely going to be to put one put the A route on a check and release because that will make sure that he blocks any initial rushers before he goes out in a pattern. And it'll also hold any uh, individual um, you know coverage safeties 
in coverage. So like I said, I could always throw to the running back. As you can see right here, a lot of times um, the, the way that the running back uh, is positioned, the, the man defending him is not going to be right in front of him. So you could always do that if you see that look or if you see they're saying too much of a blitz. A lot of times they won't even cover the running back, making that a very big play. But once again, this is really the best way to go. Like I said, check and release. You'll have that uh, look where those guys slam into one another. And, you know, pressure is still going to be your enemy. But if you get that ball out fast enough, you can see how – um, you know, maybe there I was probably moving my feet a little bit too much. But you can see how that route consistently gets open. I'll go ahead and do it one more time just so I can end on a victory here. As you can see, the uh, the wide receiver threw it kind of early there. If you throw it too early, you're obviously not going to score, but it still is a big completion. Next up, we'll choose cover three. Cover three is one of the harder defenses to score against with this one-play touchdown concept, but the running back still is there. As you can see, he's going to get open outside for a big play because this cornerback is really going to follow the post route this particular player here will pull that cornerback out of his area enough that it's just like the safety on the other play where the cornerback is going to still have to drop off to come back for the running back but by the time he does it's too late as the running back's already open for a very big play you can also run from a hash mark to the short side of the field motion in this receiver here put the wide receiver on a fade and then block both my tight ends so i'm going to slide my protection to the right and i'm going to hide behind those bad boys until uh, my receivers get home as you can see here the x route does have a lot of clearance up top because the cornerback just doesn't drop back based on the fact there's nobody there to react to. If you watch the replay here, you can see how this cornerback starts to play really close to the line of scrimmage, and that's because there's no receivers out here for him to drop back and respect. And this is what's really going to cost him the play is he doesn't really drop back quickly enough based off of the fact that he's so close to the line of scrimmage that this receiver here is just sprinting in a dead sprint and gets behind him. So that's really what makes this play work as the tight ends just really cause different pre-snap alignments from different coverages next up we got cover four match so we'll pick up for quarters here's another play where the running back can be a very big play so you're going to want to probably run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field as he will get space but just like the the play before you can probably run it from the short side and have a lot of success too because it's the same idea once he turns up field these are just like man coverages in a way uh, as you can see here he really recognizes late and you know i can just get i can get a very big play to the running back but there's bigger plays to be had it's another play where you're going to want to motion this receiver in and put the y receiver on a fade this time and you're going to see how the x receiver will get a one-on-one -on -one that he typically can win with the safety once he breaks inside as we get another very easy one play touchdown against cover four quarters this is another play where the ideal matchup would be the cornerback on the uh this receiver on the post route that's why motioning him in is so important because it hides him now the cornerback's going to cover the streak or the fade while this guy here once he breaks inside the safety he's pretty much gone at any point in time once he gets inside leverage there you know you can throw the ball so i'm going to end the video there if you guys want to see more videos like this you can always check out my ebooks links in the description and the top in comment or let me know in the comment section and maybe i'll put another offense from the ravens next week until next time thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below